In small water animals, the blood carries excess water to specialized cells where it is collected and discharged through tubes back into the environment. In mammals, kidneys perform this function, keeping the water content of their body fluids in balance with their tissue cells. But suppose the concentration of salt becomes higher outside of an animal or protozoan cell. This is exactly what happens when a paramecium is carried downstream to the sea, an event we can simulate by adding a drop of salt water. As the paramecia encounter the higher concentration of salt in the sea water, they lose water through osmosis, shrivel, and die. Drink enough sea water, and the same will happen to your cells. So osmosis can cause a decrease or an increase in a cell's water content. Red cell ghosts produced by osmotic rupture have provided biologists with pure samples of plasma membrane for use in studying its structure and chemistry. An electron micrograph of a section through the plasma membrane shows that it is composed of a double layer of molecules. Biochemists picture them like this, a double layer of fat molecules. The question is, how do water molecules get through this fatty membrane? The accepted theory is that water molecules are able to shoot through gaps or pores, irregularly distributed in the membrane. But this does not explain how other molecules cross the membrane barrier into a cell. The mechanism puzzled cell biologists until the discovery of proteins embedded in the membrane. The protein acts as a lock. When a passing molecule fits it like a key, the lock opens, sending the molecule through into the cytoplasm. This is called facilitated diffusion.